hello, Jennifer. How's it going? It's going pretty good. I have to admit, today I am, am consuming a pumpkin uh, spiced Spice. cold brew um, oh, goodness. from Starbucks. So pumpkin spice came out today. Okay. <laughs> I just needed something to feel like the fall, like the year's progressing forward. <laughs> That's funny. I, you know what? My friends and I were just talking about that this weekend is the whole, the hype around pumpkin spice lattes and just how American that is. And it really is just spices is, is all it is. They just added some spices to an already existing milk coffee combination and and it's voila this amazing thing that people are just crazy over I, i'm good with it in coffee it's beyond that like the pumpkin spiced everything else i'm kind of like mm. uh, a little too much okay yeah, like if it's pumpkin or pumpkin bread that's cool because that already existed but it's the pumpkin pop tarts and cereal and i don't know whatever else they come Cookies, up with Cookies, i don't know hot I don't chocolate know. and i mean they put it in everything right they put it in everything <laughs> like so what have you been doing i've been drinking pumpkin lattes what are you up to <laughs> i finally uh got a chance to finish schitt's creek um okay. you know we do binge watch you here and there when we have some time uh we do a lot more than just binge watch but uh we uh i did finally uh finish and as i said before why can't you just give me closure? Just give me some closure. They want you to come back. There's one more but season. But there's no, there's no coming back. They've decided to. Oh, just I thought they were gonna have one more season. It. No, this is it. That's that's what I that's what I know. At oh. least that's what I've read. So yeah, they, I don't like that They either. had a couple of things that I felt like was a closure, but like I really want to know if they ever get out of town. Or um, I really loved the way they um, played out the relationship with David and his partner, and uh, and you know just the the awesomeness of both the parents and the awesomeness right, that's of it. the community. And you know you have this tiny little town which generally a lot of times people think is just conservative and, mm -hmm. and not really open-minded but just for them to see that and I, I like Schitt's Creek because they have this very um, predominant um, gay character on um, screen and you know life that just kind of revolves around him in a sense um, and they do it in such a great way it's just another relationship right they they have their uh, uh challenges and their show their affection just like any other couple would and I just love that it was sort of um uh um what's the word I'm looking for um real sort of <laughs> real for sure it's just uh, uh I can't think of the word but um it was just nice to see you're you were correct it is the last one bummer yeah. tear I know like even more and, tears and again no closure well maybe the idea is to think about it is that they had come to embrace living in Chits Creek and that's where they're going to be. That's, that's how it is. Like, you know, they've embraced it. Sometimes like you, like we say, when life gives you lemons, we made a podcast. Maybe when life gave them lemons, they, they embraced, live in a hotel. Live, embrace Chits Creek finally, you know? <laughs> yeah. They own the town. So, they you know. They own the town. But you know, that's the other part of it is you really don't see them talking about being owners of a town, except for the one or two episodes in the beginning. There's never that sort of sense of, um, uh, uh, ownership or, you know, just that I found is really cool. And the other thing is there are these very affluent, um, uh, members of society, family, uh, themselves. And, um, there is this deep rooted love amongst them and the, the husband and wife, you know, um, and Johnny and Moira, like you would think that they probably are just there to, you know, um, they, they're, they're just there because, you know, they have been there, but they have this deep, deep rooted love and relationship with each other from the very beginning, uh, from their courtship all the way, you mm -hmm. know, to, uh, to now. And, and it's nice to see, and they're just quirky. I love Moira's character. Well, she, David, I think she, they, you they know, built, the over pronunciation of things. Yes. It's community too. I think they yeah. built a community in there. Like the things that they like, she, you know, she had a theater going in there and, yeah. and, um, you know, uh, the dad working with, I can't remember um, the girl's name at the hotel, but like, as they managed yeah. that together, Billy, Stevie, you know, mm -hmm. Stevie, yeah, all that whole thing. I mean, it was a, com you know, see how they became part of that community, I think, as you're saying too. And that, you know, again, they took kind of what was thrown at them in the beginning. They were kind of like, Ooh, how can we live here? You know, our life was so much different, mm -hmm. but embraced it and, and made, made do with it. So I think, you know, there's, there's a good moral story in there. Yeah. Great learning. That's for sure. 
So that's awesome. And that brings us to our yes. next episode. Yeah. So how <laughs> can you learn in the time of Corona, right? <laughs> Learning in the time of Corona. That is uh, what we're going to be talking about. And um, we have a great guest uh, coming up. So let's meet Susan. Oh, hello, Susan. Welcome today to Hashtag Laid Off Life. We're so glad you could join us. Thank you. Nice to see you both. Yes. So we, uh, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Hey, well, I'm Susan Tornloff. I have been in the learning world since my entire career. I was a third grade teacher. I then got into online training, which was um, at IBM in the early 90s. And then I've been with a number of other online training companies, Skillsoft, Corporate Executive Board, and I'm currently at Coursera. So thank you for having me today. I'm in sales, which means I work with organizations helping their learning development teams offer libraries of content for various um, business organizations within their, their company. Perfect. That's, that's great, Susan. So can you tell us a little bit more about what Coursera is and what some of these online learning tools are? Great. Um, thank you. I will. So Coursera started in 2012 by a couple of Stanford professors, Andrew and Daphne, who decided that, that you did not have to attend Stanford to have access to some of the best education. So they started um, with some MOOCs from Stanford, Massive Open Online Content, and then they began to enlist other universities to do the same. From 2012 to 2016, Coursera was a consumer platform only with most of the content being offered for free and then began offering a deeper certifications and specializations for a fee. To this day, that is still really what Coursera is about, to provide learning for everyone in the world, accessibility, and also for free and paid, which we can talk about a little bit later. Um, in 2017, I joined because a number of organizations, big companies like AT&T and IBM were saying, why don't you offer us a platform for our employees? And that's the group I'm in, it's the Enterprise Sales Group. And we have about 2,500 customers now in our small three and a half years of business. Uh, lots of the large companies around the world, governments um, around the world, as well as the US government. And we also work with colleges. So we have a Coursera for Campus group and we offer, I think it's four or 5,000 colleges um, training for their COVID related displaced students right now. So uh, that's all new since COVID. So that's interesting. So colleges are reaching out to Coursera to offer learning and what charging the students? Right now we are doing a lot for free because we're um, supporting COVID right now, but eventually it will have to shift to some sort of paid model. But it was a mutual um, goal to support all these students that have been sent home from their colleges. We call it Coursera for Campus, and it was just a light bulb of an idea in January we were thinking about, and then March it just went full blown. Circumstances, right? Yep. This, yeah. is, this is one of those, again, I can't remember how Jim has quote, but circ sometimes circumstances, would you say your quote before one of the- Create opportunities. Uh, create opportunities, or, opportunities something like that, that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back to my notes. I'll, I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> so yeah, um, so has, you, so one of the things I want to talk about too is like everybody seems to feel like, um, especially because I have kids in school and Jigna has kids in school or a child in school. Um, I don't want to give you more kids than you have because she thinks I'm crazy with four and she's got one. So, you know, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, they act like that online learning is new, like this whole asynchronous and um, coming together is new. Well, should yeah. I tell you how old it is? Yeah, tell us how old it is. <laughs> and my first job in online training was in 1991, and it was with IBM's learning group. And we had these laser discs that we would sell to a library at a company, and you would go check them out. And okay, when you say laser disc, you're not doing like a CD, like you're doing like a like a record size. Right. Yes. <laughs> And so we would, we would, we would ship these self-paced training boxes. And if you worked at, I remember Bank of America was my customer. They had a large library and you checked them out. And that was, an, it wasn't online, but it was self-paced. And then we went to um, 
some CD-ROMs, and then the internet, when we used to have the dial-up, <laughs> and it used to go very, very slow. I used to hate giving demos back in those days. Um, and then it's just evolved. Uh, yeah, I joined Skillsoft in 98, when we had 50 courses, and we walked around the piece of paper and said, what do you think of this online soft skill training? So it's really evolved over time, and there's many, many applications for it. Um, as I mentioned, companies use it for their employees. I have a number of companies that actually are training their interns in hopes that they'll come stay at the company. Um, there's just lots of different ways that people are using online training. It certainly has evolved into, even when you have a longer course, like we have these university courses we can talk about, but everything that's successful about online training is if it's a modulized, so you can take it in you know, on the train, on your tablet, it's really come quite a long way from those laser discs. So, like, yeah. so companies were doing this, but so I think the interesting thing about like Coursera is it's been consumer driven versus company driven and, and you moved into that space, as you've said, over the last few years. Um, and the consumer part interests me right now because as being myself, also being, uh, being in this hashtag laid off life, mm -hmm. um, is a great opportunity to uh, learn some new skills and uh, make sure that I'm staying employable and smart because sometimes I feel like when I'm at home, um, I talk to the dogs a lot, so. Uh. <laughs> it's a great time. And I think that's why we've seen our, our whole platform had 40 million users before March 5th and has 60 million users now. And that comes from not only the campuses and the governments and the enterprise, but I think people were dusting off their licenses so how the consumer model works is twofold. You can go out there at any time and take a limited library of completely free courses. We've put them up since COVID. There's science of well-being. There's a whole list if you go to our website that are completely free. The rest of the courses, you can dabble in them for free before you have to pay. You can watch the videos. Um, and then if it's a course you do want to take, you can either buy it by the course or you can buy a year subscription that's $400 for a whole year to take anything you want. So you can jump in and out of courses. So it's fairly reasonable for a 12 month investment. Um, so perfect examples are skills you need for getting back in the workforce or being really um, uh, appealing to organizations. And those skills might be reskilling or upskilling or even beginning some data literacy skills. We have an AI for everyone course. We have skills listed and courses listed by your role. So if you're a marketing manager, how to improve your data science skills. And then my boyfriend's taking music classes from Berkeley College of Music. He's on his fourth class and he bought a piano. That's cool. Now, that's for free? What? That's for free? Um, no, those ones you have to pay for. So they're in your subscription for the year. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, you can, I mean, language courses, all sorts of courses. That's crazy. That's a lot of, like. There's a lot of options <laughs> and just a whole wide range of options, which is great because you generally don't see that even at universities, they have at times, you know, very limited um, uh, degree options available for, for the individual. So it's really nice to have everything in, under one roof, uh, for lack of a better way to say it. But, um, you know, there, there are free courses and then there are, uh, paid, uh, for courses. Now, is there a big difference? Like, am I getting my money's worth, uh, if I am, you know, get taking a free course and how, um, relevant it, are those courses if I am uh, putting that on my resume per se? Sure. So the totally free ones because of COVID, you get to take the whole class, including the lessons, and you get the certificate for free. And that's a bundle that we put out there of 20 or 30 courses. Um, then there's the free dabble, I'll call it, <laughs> where you can preview a course. Those you can only do the videos and not actually do the lessons and get your certificate. In order to do the whole course, you do need to pay either by the course, the specialization, or this unlimited subscription. Um, the reason people do pay is because our, of our teachers, really. The reason, whether you are paying on the consumer or taking from my, my clients, the number one reason people come back to Coursera is the faculty. They're trained instructors. 
And back to my dinner table at home, Andrew Ain is teaches the um, AI for Everyone course. And just last night over dinner, Matt was saying to me, he's like, he is such a good teacher. <laughs> and he's like, he explains things so perfectly. And that's what we hear. He gets thousands of emails. So um, the faculty is really the reason people come back time and time again. They know how to engage their students. So if you do the, the package, that means you can get, go towards the certifications as well in there. Right, you can get that. So every course has a certificate that you can see. You can go to my LinkedIn profile and you can see a few certificates. And then every four, like every specialization yeah. might have four courses and then you get an additional certificate. So for instance, um, the machine learning courses, which are one of our most popular, you get a certificate branded by either Andrew Ames group or University of Michigan, University of Washington, depending on what the university is. It's branded by the university. Um, with that being said is we do have some certificates that can actually help you get employed. So we have partnered with Google and we have an IBM and in Google, particularly we have a Google IT cert. And once you complete that series, which can take about 12 months, your resume can be submitted into a hiring pool that we've partnered with Google and we've gotten over 100 organizations that have said they will read your resume. So there's another number of courses out there. You could go to the Coursera.org website and you can find some of these courses that will really impact your career. There's a video story on our website too of a gentleman that had to move to a Midwestern town because his wife got a job there and he didn't get a job there and he got a job at a local community college in the administration area. I think he was groundskeeper or something like that, like the function of running the community college. Did his Google IT cert and now he's in the IT department of that community college. Oh, that's a great story. Yeah, that's a really great story. Yeah. And um, it, it, just the fact that it's available to anybody um, on a global basis, I really like. And, uh, you know, we are talking specifically uh, about Coursera, which uh, Susan, um, you know, is part of. But uh, Susan, uh, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot and um, ask you to tell us a, a little bit more about some of your competitors that, are, that might be out there and uh, that are also great resources. The nice part about Coursera is I always say we're an and, not completely an or. So I come from Skillsoft, and Skillsoft is more of what we call the microlearning catalog companies. And Skillsoft might be in the same catalog as Udemy um, and LinkedIn Learning. And those are great for, I need to learn Excel, or I already know Excel a little bit, and I just want some bits and pieces. I have to go into a job interview, and I want 30 minutes of best questions. I'm at work, and I have to go into performance review. So microlearning is important. It's a library companies will always have to grab and go. And then if you really want to have some sort of transformative, deeper skill learning, where um, you actually, again, get a certificate from a university, or we have 40 organizations like Google, IBM, Oracle, Cisco, the whole gang, um, then that's why you would also come to Coursera for a deeper transformative learning. The, um, I will say everything at Coursera can be taken in chunks. So if you see four hours or 10 hours, don't be afraid. <laughs> you can, you know, take the videos and, and build together. So we really just build up the skills. Maybe four hours is all weaved and stacked together and then you get a final certificate. But there's a room for all of us out there. Yeah. So speaking of room for all of us out there now, this is a, this is a, my learning style. So I'm just going to ask you a lot of times I do audiobooks and listen while I'm driving from one place to, to one place to another. Are there options like that um, on, on Coursera or even other platforms that we should be maybe looking into so that we can be doing our normal um, jobs or running errands and whatnot and also learning at the same time? Yes. It was a perfect question. Absolutely at Coursera, you can do yours on the train listening because they're lectures. I haven't seen um, some of the other courses recently. I left Skillsoft six years ago. They were more um, 
screen reading, but it's, I would say someone has to look and decide for themselves. On our courses, you can bring up the actual transcript of the professor and you can speed up or slow down um, 1.25, 1.5, whatever to your speed. And this is how I learn. I actually bring the transcript up and it uh, highlights the words that the, the faculty member is saying. So you can listen, you can listen and read, you can do whatever you want. So I took the Agile course for beginners. Uh, one of the ones I took out there was an, a course I audited from a university. And I guess it's one of the ones you get to dabble in, as Susan was mentioning earlier. And I was, uh, I love that it had the audio. And I actually, I used the app too that was on my phone. I put the app on my phone and my iPad. And I was floating around in my little pool outside um, listening to it. I know Susan was like, don't drop your right. <laughs> iPad. That sounds a little dangerous. <laughs> But it worked really well. It was nice. I got to get a little sun and, you know, lay out in the pool and, and, and learn a little something at the same time. So it was great. So it's a personal preference. There is the app. Um, my music student prefers the laptop. <laughs> but whatever preference you want, it's there. And in multiple languages. Not every course is in every language, but multiple languages. Now, would you consider Coursera as a equivalent to a university learning um, or is there a difference and in, in maybe which cases do you think one should go for a formal university training versus a um, certificate or I, I, are there degrees on Coursera? Yeah so I'm not in the degree group but I can speak at a high level to them so um, we have 21 or 22 degrees right now um, there are a couple of undergrads, but mostly graduate degrees. We just had our first class um, graduate last year. They can run 12 to 24 months and you can get a master's degree for approximately 21 or $22,000 versus $50,000. You do apply through the university and then it's a joint partnership. They have cohorts and they have tutors and they have um, online, you know, get togethers and then a couple of the programs you did, you probably will still fly to the universities for different, um, you know, in-person weeks at a time, like a week here, a week there. Um, so your question was, how are they different? Um, you know, I, I, I think it's a personal preference, really. Um, I went to college and I loved being on campus and I loved the social part of it. So it just depends on, I think, the needs um, I did read a statistic recently that a lot of our learners in the degree programs are actually in their 30s. So they maybe don't want to be on a campus or they have families or they have other priorities. So there's a, a great amount of people that are um, wanting to go back to school, so to speak, and they're utilizing Coursera. Just, this just reminded me of the um, that movie, Old School. I don't know if you guys remember that with the uh... The, uh, with the streaky. Will Ferrell, uh, streaky. yeah, it's streaky, yeah. And there, I just, I just want to be the, I want to be blue, you know, when I get older, at in a sorority or something in a, a university. You're my boy, blue, you know. <laughs> just go out and in uh, flames, I guess. I don't know. He actually did go out enjoying himself quite a bit. So, <laughs> sorry, it just uh, popped in my head. Just, uh, I digress. I apologize for we that. We like to no talk problem. about. TV shows or, or usually Seinfeld comes up at some point. We oh, yeah. Something to that or TV shows that, you know, I don't, you should, if you hadn't had a chance to see it, Susan, we have an episode where we binge talk about what's binge worthy and we cover 40 something shows in an hour. Oh, I must watch that. Yes. <laughs> we do. And, we we yeah, do other things to watch TV. Shameless plug, Coursera is binge worthy. I was just saying to someone this morning, just like every company that says you have to complete X amount of training, you know, I have training I have to complete. We get to choose our own courses and I'll look through which ones and we talk to each other about which one's good to binge. And nice. I, I binged the Colo University of Colorado feedback class recently on the weekend. Um, and so we have binge worthy also. That's cool. Hey, that just reminded me uh, of something you mentioned taking a University of Colorado class. Um, now, if I, let's say I took a few courses, four or five courses, and then later on decided to 
go to a, a university to finish up my, maybe my learning, can I transfer those uh, uh, Coursera courses to the university? Would I get credit for something like that? That's a really good question. There is a limited list of that on our website. I don't have it committed to memory. But there is a list um, of certain courses that if you were to then apply to that university, you could use those credits. Okay. So Susan, you had mentioned, you know, universities earlier on uh, with uh, having to pay tuition for 20K versus 55K. Now, are these universities reputable? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. They're, they're not only reputable, they're global. Um, so as far as the degrees, again, I refer people to our website, but University of Illinois is one of them for the degrees. As far as the content, all of our, as a whole, we have over 200 universities from around the world. I already mentioned for music, Berkeley College of Music, but we have um, uh, Johns Hopkins, Duke, uh, Stanford, um, a number of international ones as well. Um, they we're very particular about our universities. So they aren't every university. You have to be somewhat prestigious and well-known um, International University of Hong Kong, um, back to the US, NYU, Northeastern, uh, Princeton. I'm trying to think of them all. <laughs> There's many, many, many. That's a good list. That's for yeah. sure. I mean, if yeah. uh, it, that, that's a good list to choose from. So we, let's say some of these universities are offering uh, some free courses and others are you know paid for. So when does one sort of decide um, you know, this makes sense for, for me to take for free. And then when does one decide to maybe move towards a paid uh, course offering? Well, so they're all paid. You can just preview them for free. Uh, except for this one list of all free courses that we're doing for COVID. But it's like the gotcha. class I took, the um, Agile one, it was like a, you're auditing it. So mm -hmm. I got okay. like, I got to be the course. I got to see the, the professor read the transcript and some of the questions asked, but I don't get a sort of, like a completion certificate, certificate at the end. Right. right. Well, that's that's really interesting. So at least it allows the individual to preview the class and make sure it's it's relevant for them before they spend the money on it and, um, you know, um, right. uh, get that. So it, it's very beneficial. And for those who don't really care about certification and just want to learn, just audit go away. at it. Go yeah. at it, right? Yeah. And, and a lot of, there are a lot of folks who just want to learn, right? So um, and certification or that piece of paper may not be as significant. I mean, there are certain areas I feel the same way. I'd rather be educated and, and learn over, you know, showing that I have a degree in something that may or may not really be relevant to a certain um, job or functionality. So uh, that's really nice to hear. So let me ask this. When you do get, if you, you have the bundle you pay for and you get a certificate completion, is there a way to you get any kind of snazzy way to put it on LinkedIn to put it on your profile? Because I know yeah. that's a big thing for the people who do like that. They like those snazzy little things to like badges or, you know, the um, Medal of Honor certificate. <laughs> there is there's a beautiful certificate branded by the um, either university or company, um, co branded with us. You download and you can just put on your LinkedIn profile. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. And I think we're the number one on LinkedIn. When nice. I started a couple of years ago, we were the number two, with LinkedIn being number one. But I think we've surpassed that on certificates. And then um, my next question is, so what has music? Do you have cooking classes? I don't know that. Oh, I'll look so real quick. <laughs> I don't know You'll that. You'll have because to find out for me. be very COVID related. Look at this. We have the Science of Gastronomy from Hong Kong University. We have That's Stanford cool. Introduction to Food and Health, Stanford Child Nutrition, The Meat We Eat from Florida. Here's one that's not cooking, so I don't know why it came up in the cooking search, but it's called The Truth About Cats and Dogs. I don't think that's a cooking Ooh, class. Right. Another topic, and I'll do a search. Um, oh, ooh, ooh, this sounds like a fun. Um, how about TV production, TV and film production? Okay, we've got script writing from the Michigan State University. Let's keep looking. And podcasting while you're at it. Oh, that might be good. So we have music production, script production. Uh, let's look at podcasting. 
Um, let's see. Get Interactive Practical Teaching with Technology, University of London. Nothing specific to podcasting. Maybe you'll need um, to hire us to do a class on podcasting. <laughs> we have things also like traditional healing of the body, how music can change your life. And then obviously we've got the good old tensor flow, deep learning, business, financial monitoring. It really does range the gambit. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. A little something for everybody. Thank you. This has been great. We've had a lot of fun learning about all the courses that are out there. What are, do you have any final thoughts for any of the potential new learners or learners that are already out there using Coursera you want to say about that or just about learning and online education in general? Well, um, thank you. And thanks for having me. This has been very fun. Somewhere, and I should have looked this quote up, but somewhere I read an article in the last month or two in COVID that actually you, learning and using our brain and learning things new in this time that we're all stressed in actually will help us be less depressed, less stressed, manage the world we're in. I think if we take our mind off every all the noise and the stress mm -hmm. and, and we actually dive deep into learning something, I think it is going to help our psyche. So having been in learning our whole life, <laughs> my whole life from teaching third grade till now, um, I would just say, don't be afraid of online training. There's a lot of good online training out there, like Coursera, um, and I just jump in. Perfect. Looks like, you know, I'm ready to take my next class in my pool, so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I would love to take a music class, so. I'm going to definitely check out Coursera, uh, Ud Udemy, and LinkedIn uh, Learning as well. So there's a lot of free stuff out there we should definitely be checking out. So you think I take a music class in my pool? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? What would it be called? Like water? I don't know. Could I get a I piano up to the side of the pool? And I don't know. Do, can you do water gongs? Like, like <laughs> Being the gong and size. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to figure something out. <laughs> side hustle. That'll be our side uh, hustle. Yeah, any viewers out there taking courses or things you really love, we'd love to hear it in the comments. Let us know what courses you're taking and, and things you like out there because I think it's true, like the lifelong learning, going out there and learning stuff that Susan said, taking your, your mind off the other stuff and filling your brain with good things mm -hmm. uh, is a good thing to do. Thank you so much, Susan. This has been really informative. We love speaking with you. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. It was great seeing you all. Thank Take you. care. So, Jigna, are you ready to go learn something new? Absolutely. I'm just really stoked about the music classes. I really want to check those out and see, um, you know, what I can learn and maybe even see if my son might be interested in learning. You know, she, he does take some piano lessons and, and here and there, and he loves to learn by watching. Mm -hmm. um, and he actually learned to solve the Rubik's Cube by looking at online and, you know, he solved a okay. Rubik's Cube? He did. Yeah. He, okay. it took I'm him still a while. working on the same one from 1984. So. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, and a friend of mine, one of my friends uh, really taught him how to, you know, sort of, sort of do it, but they both looked online and, you know, they were going back and forth and yeah, my awesome. son loves to learn online. So this is great. Um, I, I really love that there are these amazing opportunities now for all of us. Well, and I love the idea that too, like if you wanted to go back to school, there's opportunities to look at that or even take some of the programs that could put you uh, into a pool of resumes to be looked at for having certain skills. So, I, you know, a lot of great opportunities there. So, um, and I just learned, enjoyed knowing that if there's something out there I want to search for and learn for that, that's a good place to start. And also any of the other companies out there who offer learning to the, the normal consumer that you don't have to get through your business. So um, lots of good stuff. So let's see if we can learn anything new from our cookie. All right, let's do it. Oh, I made a mess. Oh, this is this is a very interesting one. Oh, I got a sweet one. Go ahead. A real friend asked to spend time with you, not money. I love this because I don't have any money <laughs> right now. So there you go. Um, but yay, I like that. I, know I like that, that one. And that's we can just so true. spend time with each other. I know. Yeah, I think friendship is uh, is just that, is that they are looking to have that quality time versus, you know, um, just spending, going out and spending money and, and uh, uh, Corona and the quarantine are really putting every, everyone's friendships to the test. So absolutely. Yeah. Let's see yeah, who comes out of it, right? It. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Mine is an optimist is always able to see the bright side of other people's troubles. So 
So maybe um, eager, being an eager Ernie is not a bad thing. I don't know. Or I'm positive nice. Patty. <laughs> or Phyllis, nice. sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's, that's true sometimes. Yeah, I think, you know, so um, yeah. Well, which is interesting because we're going to talk about one of our future episodes about how to get positive energy around you. So I think we'll be talking about with an optimist coming up here real soon about that positive energy. So stay Absolutely. tuned for that episode and uh, many more to come. So we'll, I guess this, this brings us to the end. <laughs> well, be sure to subscribe to us. Uh, check us out on laidofflife.co.